Hey there, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School family. Pastor Schmidt coming to you with these daily devotions that are, are brought about by the, the current situation we find ourselves in. Uh, but I am thankful for the technology that we have today that I am able to come to you into your homes or wherever you are when you're watching this. I wish I could see you in person, but obviously circumstances don't allow that. But what a great opportunity to still be able to be in God's word together and hopefully uh, encourage each other during this time. Just a little bit about these devotions and what to expect. Uh, I will be doing them for the next uh, 10 weekdays anyway. Two weeks we'll be going through the book of Philippians. Uh, that, that has four short chapters. So we'll be able to get through that book in no time. But I intend for these devotions to be participatory. In other words, do them together as a family, as a couple, if applicable. Obviously, if you're an individual, you can do them on your own as well. But I expect you guys to, to read the passages. I'm going to pause. I'm not going to read the passage yourself. You just choose somebody in your family to read it out loud. There will also be some reflection questions, which I ask you to pause the video again and answer them uh, as a family, as a couple, whoever happens to be there. And then, of course, we will end in prayer, which I will say, but certainly encourage you all to add to your add to those prayers with your own requests and thanksgivings. Uh, again, what to expect over these next 10 days is we'll read a passage from Philippians. I will introduce a word of the day, the theme of the day for those devotions and have a little reflection on them. Then I'll ask you some questions and we'll end in prayer and also with a suggested hymn for you to sing as well. So let's get started. I want you to open up your Bible, uh, whether you have one or you're all or everybody in the family has a Bible, open up to Philippians chapter 1. And I want you to pause this video in just a second and read, pick somebody to read out loud, Philippians 1 verses 1 through 11. Now that you've read that, let me give you a little bit of background on Paul's letter to the Philippian church and to the, the church there in Philippi. The, Paul and Silas made it to Philippi. That's recorded in Acts chapter 16. And if you want to do a little further digging, I recommend, recommend that you read through Acts chapter 16. But when they get there, they uh, find Lydia, who is a seller of purple goods, who is uh, converted to believe in Jesus, and they are able to stay at her house. Later on, Paul casts out a demon from a slave girl, which causes all sorts of trouble for Paul and Silas, and eventually they are thrown in jail, where overnight, uh, in chains, Paul and Silas are giving thanks to God and singing hymns to him. After there's an earthquake and the... the the criminals, all who are locked up, are uh, their chains are set free, uh, but they don't escape. And Paul and Silas are able to witness to the jailer there. And the jailer and his whole family are baptized and become believers in Jesus. And eventually Paul and Silas are freed the next day when Paul says, Hey, we're Roman citizens. You don't have a right to throw us into jail. Now, the context in which Paul is writing this letter, so Paul starts the church there in Philippi, but now Paul is in jail once again, this time in Rome. And really, he's under house arrest there in Rome. So he, it's not quite a dungeon like it was before, but he's not allowed to come and go as he please. He's under guard the whole time. And while he is imprisoned there in Rome, he takes the opportunity to write letters to these churches that he has already started, including this one to the church in Philippi in order to encourage them. And that's what this letter really is. It is a, a letter of encouragement and joy. And that's our word of the day. Joy. Joy in any kind of circumstance is really a theme of the whole book of Philippians. I want you to think about, right, you are 
not imprisoned, although it may feel like it sometimes, uh, being stuck at home for, for such a long time. But think about uh, somebody that you really miss, that you wish that you could be with. For students, it might be a, a classmate, a friend. Uh, for others, it might be a, a family member who, who lives nearby, but you're just not able to visit with them. Or perhaps it's somebody far away. Uh, and think about how much you, you long to be with them. I remember uh, when my wife Kristen and I were dating and I went home uh, for the summer and so we were far apart, Michigan and Missouri, and uh, I really longed to see her and be with her. But one of the things that helped me get through it was we would write to each other, cards, letters. And so whenever I was missing her, I'd go back to one of those letters and, and what she read, uh, and that would uh, fill me with joy. And so Paul says he, he longs to be with the Philippians, but he knows that's not a possibility. So the next best thing is he, he writes a letter and he expresses his longing, right? Um, he says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you uh, and uh, making my prayer with joy. And I hold you in my heart. I yearn for you with all the affection of Christ Jesus. And so despite his situation, Paul is, is filled with joy when he thinks of the Philippians and the relationships that he has with them. Certainly, I miss being able to see all of you face to face. But when I think of you, I have joy knowing that, as Paul says, we are all partakers of the same grace. God's unearned, undeserved love in Christ Jesus is yours it's mine, and we are brought together, even if we, we can't see each other face to face. We are a family, and we are connected by Jesus, and that can bring us joy, no matter what our circumstances are. Whether we're uh, in prison like Paul, or uh, in our homes for a long time, or whatever our struggles might be, we can have joy because of Jesus and the grace and love that comes from God. And we can trust that, that God is at work in us. He who began a good work will bring it to completion at the day of Christ Jesus. Uh, and we know that day when Jesus returns, we will experience full and complete joy forever and ever. And we can encourage each other uh, until that day finally comes. I want you to, to pause in just a minute and reflect on these questions, and I'll put them up on the screen as well so you can see them. Uh, but each of you take a turn answering these questions and having a little conversation about them. The first question is this. What does it mean to have joy as a Christian, and what might that look like? What, is it, what does it look like, and what does it mean to have joy? And the second question is this. In your current situation that we are in because of the coronavirus, in what ways can your love abound more and more? That's what Paul says, his prayer is for the Philippians, that their love would abound more and more. So how can your love abound more and more? Your love for God, first of all, your love for your family, that may be more difficult, you're spending a lot of time together, your love for your neighborhood and your neighbors, the people around you? How can your love abound more and more for God, for your family, for your neighbor? Pause the video and answer those questions amongst yourselves right now. Dear brothers and sisters, joy is not found in the present circumstances of your life, which always go up and down. Joy is not about just plastering a smile to your face no matter what. No, rather, where there is Jesus, there is joy. And Jesus has promised to be with you always. Will you please pray with me? This prayer is similar to Paul's prayer in verses 9 through 11. Lord Jesus, May our love abound more and more. Fill us up with knowledge and all discernment so that we may know what is, is right and blameless for us to do. Fill us with the fruit of righteousness 
That is, the good works that come through the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. That in everything, you would receive glory and praise. Be with each and every one of us. Protect us. Be with those who are dealing with the coronavirus and all of its effects. And we ask for your healing upon our uh, community, our nation, and our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Our hymn of the day, if you have a hymnal, is number 803, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Uh, and so if you do not have a hymnal, you should be able to, to find the lyrics pretty easily online. And if you're looking for uh, the melody as well to sing along, if you're not, uh, not sure of it, uh, I encourage you to, to go to YouTube. You can look it up. I found one, uh, a piano instrumental on YouTube under the name Caleb Brazy. And it's not quite uh, the same lyrics, but uh, you should be able to, to sing along in your hymnals or just follow the words uh, on that screen as well. Again, that's number 803 in the Lutheran Service Book. Until next time, God bless you and give you joy.